Welcome to the Lost Codex, my name is Jesse, and we're trying something a little new. With Dragonflight Alpha in full effect, we wanted to take advantage of our Alpha access and dive into unusual territory for the Lost Codex by providing feedback videos. Typically, we provide feedback on Twitter or on the forums, and whereas other creators will provide feedback on stream or in videos featuring classes or commentary on specs and talents, raids, professions, all the very big important stuff in alphas, we wanted to provide something a little bit more casual, a little bit more down to earth on what I enjoy in the game, things like transmog, class combos, open world content, rewards, things like that. Now for those of you who are interested in the actual feedback and content of this video, go ahead and skip ahead using the timestamp below, otherwise listen to this very short introduction. Now whether or not you care about this content, you may be asking, Jesse, where's the animated lore videos? Where's the usual Lost Codex stuff? And to that I say, trust me, our content is coming. We have Jeffrey locked away in a vault, working on the next video. We have our very first Dragonflight series in production. It is on its way. But in the meantime, while that video is being worked on, I wanted to try something new and provide feedback for the new expansion that is currently in Alpha. As we know, the developers are constantly asking for feedback to be given in all shapes and forms, so we're trying something a little bit new here. I feel that with visuals and audio, I could formulate my ideas a little bit better rather than go off on my 62 tweet threads that I usually go on about. Now, on to the actual content at hand. As we know, new class combos are coming in Dragonflight, but if you didn't know, I'll give you a very brief recap. Brian Halinka in the Mr. GM interview back during the interview blast when Dragonflight was announced, uh, told us that we'll be getting a whole bunch of new Rogue, Mage, and Priest class combos. For Rogues, that includes Torn and High Mountain Torrin and Draenei and Lightforge Draenei. For Priests, that includes High Mountain Torrin and Orc Priests. And for Mages, that includes High Mountain Torrin and Regular Torrin. Holinka did follow up and say that they will be providing other class race combos. They didn't really want to limit the choice of players on what class you could play based on which race was available, but some of those things do require additional artwork, whether it's paladin racial chargers, druid form, shaman totems, etc, etc. But in today's video, I'll be talking about a few particular class race combos not announced by Blizzard that I believe requires no additional amount of animation work or artwork and could be added just as easily as Torn and Draenei rogues. I could be wrong, there could be other reasons at hand, but I'm going to give the suggestions anyway. So let's get to it. The first class we're talking about is monks, and I know what you're thinking. Where are the goblin and worgen monks? You may have gone into the Wowhead model viewer and scrolled through the animations for goblin and worgen and you may have actually seen some animations belonging to the monk kit for those races. But they're actually missing a few, which I didn't realize this until recently. They're missing nearly 10 animations from the actual monk animation kit. Every single race except for worgen and goblins has a certain amount of animations for different spells, which is weird because goblins and Volpera share a similar rig or identical rig, yet Volpera have the animations. I know what you're thinking, that seems impossible, go check. The animations are on screen, Volpera have them, goblins don't. Now, I'm not an animator, I am not a character artist in any sort of way, I am not a model rigger, but if the animations exist for Volpera, I'm sure they can exist for goblins far easier than they can be made from scratch for Worgen. Worgen really are the only issue here. Worgen are the ones who are missing everything. Goblins are also missing it, but they're available on Volpera. So the big question is, are they really missing it? But that's not what I'm suggesting today. Goblins and Worgens, that will actually require some extra work. What I'm suggesting is Lightforge Draenei. When the post-Legion allied races were made available, three out of the four of them could be monks. For some reason, Lightforge Draenei couldn't, despite being the only allied race with the smallest amount of playable classes, next to the High Mountain Torrent, I believe. It's weird because Draenei can be monks. The, you know, locked away Nightborn on Suramar beneath their bubble could be monks. Void Elves could be monks, but the Lightforge Draenei can't be. 
Now, maybe it's because, you know, no Pandaren were up in space and they've been on a spaceship for a thousand years. Maybe there's a lore reason behind it. That probably is the reason, but honestly, if Void Elves can be monks and Nightborn can rejoin the world and become monks, honestly, why can't the Lightforged Draenei? Just put one on the Vindicar, put one, uh, a trainer, a Pandaren, down in Stormwind. It's, it's really a silly restriction, and there's no animation restriction. Draenei can be monks, so why can't Lightforged Draenei? The next class, and the only other class I'll be talking about, is... Warlocks, and first up we have the Zandalari and Kul'Tiris human warlocks. When Battle for Azeroth was first announced at BlizzCon, Zandalari, I believe, were able to be warlocks in the original announcement. That was later changed, and I don't really know why. Darkspear can be warlocks, trolls are not strangers to different kinds of magic, so why is warlock the exception here, especially a race as old as the Zandalari, and why can't Kul'Tiris humans be warlocks? They have the dress of our witches, right? Here's the thing about warlocks. They are the, you know, the outcasts of society. They are hiding their practice. You know, the warlocks in Orgrimmar are underground. The warlocks in Stormwind are hiding under the Slaughtered Lamb Tavern. So it's not like a public organization. So really, why can't these races be warlocks? It doesn't make sense. Dressvar has witches. Trolls, or Zandalar in particular, practice all kinds of magic. Darkspear can be warlocks. It seems weird. The, the warlock animations are there for them, so what's the restriction? The next new warlock combo we have may spark some comments of outrage, and that's Tauren warlocks and High Mountain warlocks. Give me a moment to explain. As we know, back in Legion, the High Mountain uh, clans had one particular tribe, the Fell Totem tribe that allied with the Legion. Now. They obviously didn't stick around, they were wiped out by the players or whatever, but we know that High Mountain Tauren could be warlocks. We know that the Grim Totem are the more dark sorcery practicing Tauren. So really, again, with warlocks being the outcasts as they are, is, is a High Mountain or Tauren warlock really that bizarre? If Tauren can be mages out of nowhere, or orcs can pick up you know, being able to be a priest out of nowhere, and I know, I know, Magar priests existed beforehand, is warlock magic among the Tauren really that big a deal? It's not like Bane or Mela is gonna have their guards become warlocks kind of thing, that's not what I'm saying, but again, with the whole idea that warlocks are hiding their craft, why, why, why can't they? We, we've seen it before, right? It, it's, it's a little bizarre. And this brings us to the next class race combo for Warlocks, which is Night Elves. And I know what you're thinking, really? Night Elf Warlocks? But think about it. Night Elves have been through a lot over the last couple expansions, right? And it's no... It, it, it's not impossible for several Night Elves to abandon everything they believe in and turn to a new form of power. Again, I'm gonna go back to this point over and over. Warlocks hide. Warlocks are not open in their society. So. Is a Night Elf Warlock, when Night Elf Mages were possible, is that really impossible in the lore? Not saying start a new organization, but why can't a Night Elf, why can't a Highborn turn towards the Fell? I think that'd be pretty cool. This next one, and I've said this for all of them, is probably going to be the weirdest one yet. Bear with me, pun intended, Pandaren Warlocks. I know, it's weird, you think of a Pandaren, you think of Chen, you think of Cho, you think of, you know, all these Pandaren who are calm and relaxed and happy, but what if some Pandaren are just sick of the stuff that's gone on with the Black Empire in BFA and Emissa Pandaria, and they've turned to a new source of destructive, powerful magic? Is that really outside of the realm of possibility, if we use the same logic we used for the other classes, sorry, for the other races, being that these Pandaren warlocks would study their craft in private, not out in the open. I don't, I don't think it's really impossible. I really don't. I like the idea, this visual idea, this is going a little bit too far, but Pandaren warlocks conjuring the Shah, they manipulate the Shah. I know, that's old god, shadow priest, void stuff, I know, or class skins, we're not gonna get into that, but really, why can't Pandaren be Warlocks? I know it's a weird combo, but just, let's just do it. Why not, right? 
And that brings us to our last example with Draenei Warlocks. And yes, as a Draenei fanboy, as someone who loves everything about the Draenei culture, yes, bring on the Draenei Warlocks. Now, in a perfect world, with Draenei Warlocks, I would love to see a gray or red skin Eridar variant for them to play. You know, the Legion is in shambles, some of the Eridar maybe rejoin their people, it's very tense, it would make a really cool scenario, maybe that's what Blizzard wants to do, I don't know. But as is, put in the class race combo for Draenei, it's not impossible. It would be cool, they would be practi- they, it would, they would be one of the most taboo warlocks out there, next to orcs, right? It was always interesting that orcs could be warlocks back in Classic, considering how horrible orc warlocks were in the first and second war. So a Draenei warlock would kind of be the same thing, which I think is a really cool concept. And with that, I come to my restriction list, which I know what you're thinking. You may be saying, Jesse, isn't the point of this video this kind of feedback to encourage more class race combos? And to that I say yes, but also no. I don't think that every class and every race should overlap. I really don't. That's just my opinion. And for the case of Warlocks, I believe two races should be unable to play as Warlocks. The first one being Lightforged Draenei. The entire point of the Lightforged Draenei is they are light-infused, Naru-infused. Now we know the light could it corrupt and, and do their own nasty business separately from the fell, but really, a light-infused Draenei practicing fell magic, it they would self-destruct on the spot kind of deal. I know what you're thinking, how does a Death Knight Lightforged Draenei work? How does a Holy Void Elf work? There's all these restrictions, right? But blatantly, you know, when you play a Priest, you can also play as a Holy or a Dis Priest Lightforged Draenei, so it's more of a spec issue. For Warlocks, it's a collective class issue. Fell Magic and the Holy Light does not mix together. I don't think that it would work out as a playable Lightforged Draenei Fell Infused Abomination. It, it, it doesn't work. Give it to the Eridar, give it to the regular Draenei, I'm cool with that. But Lightforged Draenei, I believe, should not be able to be Warlocks. And that brings us to our Horde equivalent, Magar. Now, at first I thought, you know what, the Magar should be able to be Warlocks, they're just a group of orcs, it's not really a big deal. And then I thought about it. Magar quite literally translates to Uncorrupted. The entire reason why Magar exists is because Garrosh went back in time, stopped his father from drinking the blood of Manoroth, and stopped the corruption of the orcs altogether, or rather delayed it as we know what happens later on in the expansion. If any group out there were to absolutely hunt down warlocks to extinction, it would be the Magar. They saw with their own eyes what happened in Tanan Jungle. I'm sure every single Bleeding Hollow who drank the Kool-Aid, every single Iron Horde traitor to Gromash who drank Gul'dan's offer was hunted down and brutally executed to the point where none of them survived. So, you want to be an Orc Warlock? Play an Orc Warlock, not a Magar. Now, I do believe some of the Magar customizations should be on Orcs, you know, the clan tattoos. Orcs still belong to clans, separate issue here, but one alliance, one horde race, Lightforged Draenei, Magar, they should not be able to be warlocks, because Lightforged Draenei, quite literally the antithesis to being a warlock, and Magar means uncorrupted, so it kind of seems weird. Now, you're gonna say, uh, Death Knight Magar exists, yeah, but that's a more of a condition that they're killed and resurrected, it's a different, not really a choice, right? And with that, that's my opinion on which classes should be able to be uh, monks and warlocks. Again, Lightforged Draenei requires no new animations. It could quite literally just be turned on like the rogues for Torrin and Draenei and Lightforge. Regular Draenei can be monks, so why can't they? And for warlocks, it might be more of a culture thing. In my opinion, Magar and Lightforged Draenei shouldn't be. I kind of hope Blizzard just does it instead of trying to come up with a story reason. Do the story reason stuff later, sure, I'd love- why are there Night Elf Warlocks? Why are there Pendaren Warlocks? But for now, you're not providing a whole bunch of lore on why there's Tauren Mages or Orc Priests, so just kind of- just, just throw it in there. In my opinion, at least. Um, 
And with that, I'd like to know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think these class combos are crazy? Tell me why Magar should be Warlocks. You're wrong, but tell me why. Uh, what did you think about this video? What did you think about the type of video? Do you want to see more alpha? Do you want to see more Dragonflight stuff? Do you want to see more feedback? Typically, the feedback that I give is forum stuff or I scream on Twitter. And disclaimer, for those who don't, don't know my sense of humor, I don't actually scream on Twitter. I don't actually harass the developers. I am 100% against harassing any game developer. And if you disagree with me, stop watching this video. Um, I just say I scream because I'm always posting about different stuff. When I give feedback, I try to focus on things that are a little bit more within the realm of possibility. I try to look at my feedback as, is what I'm saying valuable? Is it possible? Does it use some sort of existing Blizzard asset, rule, or possibility within their tool set? Or is this more of a wish list? Player housing in a system like player housing, that's a wish list. New playable races, that's a wish list. New player class combos that don't require any animation work, why not? Maybe there's a reason, maybe they'll never tell us the reason, but I'd like to provide this feedback and see what they think. I like to provide feedback on transmog, like add more trial of style ensembles or time walking ensembles or things like that. Not design new stuff, not give us brand new armor sets. No, no, no. I mean, I'm always cool for that. But make use of the assets that are sitting in the files. All sorts of things that already exist in the Blizzard kit. Just let's build upon it. That's the sort of feedback I like to give things that aren't really going to take extraordinary amounts of development time, whether it's art, modeling, coding, or just actual developer time in general. People say, oh, just write a quest. Quest design is not something that's easy to do with the snap of a finger. So I want to provide these clear and concise, at least I hope it's concise, feedback videos with visuals on things that I believe could be added. I could be wrong. I could be off the mark. Uh, maybe someone from Blizzard's watching this going, oh, buddy, you have no idea. Maybe no one's watching this, who knows, but it's something I wanted to provide. What do you think of this kind of content? Let me know. I got a couple more ideas uh, up my sleeve for this. And of course, a huge special thanks to Keyboard Turner for helping me make the visuals. Everything you saw on screen today was courtesy of Keyboard Turner. Link in the description below on Twitter. She makes some awesome stuff. Um, I'd much rather provide these, you know, make these videos with visuals made by the pros, so like Jeff and Keyboard Turner, rather than me spend 40 hours trying to, you know, learn how to make video edits and things like that. So without her, this wouldn't have been possible. It would have just been me screaming into the microphone. So thank you. Let me know what you think of this content. Leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up or down. Well, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Hit the subscribe. Hit that bell. Hit the X in the corner and go take a nap. I don't care. We'll see you guys next time. Until then.